in terms of soil, soil is our very being. We are the soil. And an ancient Veda says, in this handful of soil is your future. Take care of it, it will take care of you. Destroy it, it will destroy you. So the history of every civilization that has gone is a history of the destruction of soil. Every civilization. And the fact that India and China are still here is because we took care of the soil. We got up in the morning before we put our foot down, we apologized to the earth. Before we put a plow, we apologize to the earth. The Atharva Veda, if you want to read it. It's a beautiful text. These are poetries to the earth. They are not religions. They are the divinity in the earth and in life. And that's why for me, they are so inspiring. The idea that food is the beginning of the life process and is the circulation of the life process is exactly where our solutions to the threats to the planet and the threats to our health will come. Now, health begins in soil. It begins in soil because it's in the soil that we start producing nutrition and health. Now, just imagine, something is so wrong with an agriculture and food system where we imagine that what the soil need is synthetic nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, that's it, NPK. NPK, that's it. And every bit of it is then killing the soil. So we started to do organic farming. And we started to do organic farming because I didn't want non-violent farming. I didn't want our farming to be like war. I'd watched what it did to Punjab. We just completed a 20-year study. 20 years in our valley, Dune Valley. Different organic farms, including the Navdanya farm. So the chemical farms in Dune Valley have lost organic matter by 14%. Organic farms have increased organic matter between 29 to 99%, depending on the crops they're growing. The total nitrogen, we imagine when we pour urea onto the soil, we are increasing nitrogen content of soil. In the chemical farms, nitrogen has declined by 7 to 22 percent. We are losing nitrogen through nitrogen fertilizer. In the organic soils, we've increased it by 21 to 100 percent. By not applying urea, you're actually growing the nitrogen because the organisms are growing the nitrogen for you. Available phosphorus, up 63% in organic, zero increase in chemical. Available potassium, minus 22 in chemical, where you're applying potassium, up 14 to 84% in organic. And, you know, now they want to do bioengineering for zinc because there's a zinc deficiency. The zinc has gone down 37% in chemical. Chemical farming is a way of stealing our nutrients. It's gone up 14%. And I had a, a public health visitor from Australia. And when she saw this data, she said, I now understand why 50% of the teenagers who come to us and have depression, and we've traced that the depression is because of zinc deficiency. It's because of the way we are growing our food. Attention deficit, it's known to be because of magnesium deficiency. 70% decline in chemical, 14% increase in organic. Iron, 12% decline. And it's not just what you do to the soil, it's how you grow your biodiversity. When we grow biodiversity, and I said the yield per acre is just not enough of a measure. Because all it's measuring is a commodity, its weight, not looking at its nutrition, and equating nutritionally empty, toxic food, with nutritionally rich, healthy food. It's a very wrong measure. So I started to look at biodiversity as the outcome of agriculture. And we started to do biodiversity-based productivity taking everything that a farm grows, 
because good farms grow biodiversity. Good farms grow pollinators. Good farms grow community. Good farms grow proud farmers. Those are outputs. Humans are not just labor. And labor is not just an input into the farming system. If you see, how do they say they've grown more food over these years through industrial farming? How do they say we are more productive? You know what the calculation is? It will shock you. All they do is take labor as an input. The fewer people there are on the land, the more productive your agriculture. You might be producing less food. You might be producing worse food. But driving farmers out is your indicator of productivity. I was giving um, an annual talk in Goa for the chief minister of Goa. And there was a head of an IT business who had made some remarks before my talk. And of course, you know, the information technology business is thinking it's running the world. You know, they've become the new rubber barons of the world. They are the new billionaires. And they really feel, why well, aren't we tre being treated like emperors? So he said we should have a separate queue where we don't do immigration anyway. Why should we have passports? We shouldn't stand with the riffraff in immigration queues. And we've created such growth in the world. And it's agriculture that's driving growth down. And therefore, we need to reduce the denominator. You know, when productivity is a ratio of output per unit input, input is the denominator. He basically was saying in very mathematical ways, let's get rid of the farmers. And when I had to speak, I began with that. I said, you, you've contributed hugely, but you are an equal citizen to the smallest peasant of this country. They are not a denominator for your calculation. They are those who bring us food and health and freedom. We are not inputs. We are co-creators and co-producers with the farming system. So what we did a few years ago we, is we took 200 farms growing biodiversity organically and comparing them to chemical monoculture farms. Overall, we found 106% more copper, 61% more manganese, 243% more molybdenum, 64% more zinc, 72% more trace elements taken together. And very roughly, that is how protein per acre, carotene per acre, you don't need golden rice. They're going to push golden rice heavily. From 2008, you know, oh, children are dying of blindness. We must put carotene into the rice. It's seven thousand percent less efficient in providing carotene than our lovely moringa, our mint, our coriander, our methi. Seven thousand percent less. All we need is gardens everywhere with diversity. Gardens everywhere. We need to reclaim this earth from being a devastated planet where the chemical industry has declared war against people and the land. We need to turn this earth into a beautiful garden. And we have someone in the audience who was showing me how here in Long Island, he has created a garden. Because what the earth is asking for is our love. That's all she's asking for. Our love and our care. And the most efficient farming systems that give us far more nutrition, folic acid, energy, I mean, trace elements, iron, you don't need 75% Indian women to be iron deficient. They are because you're growing only rice and wheat and then polishing it and removing all the nutrients. And you're killing the capacity for people to garden their food. But it isn't just the care. As I mentioned, the, the pseudo-productivity is based on the idea of labor as an input. And the fewer the farmers, the more efficient your agriculture. And when the WTO the globalization started, the agribusiness lobbies were there. And we had ministers who would say, oh, we need fewer farmers to be more efficient. 
and we did two calculations for them. The first calculation was if you come, and they were saying we must become like America with 2% people on the land, 2% people. You have more people in jail than on the land. We should put everyone out of jail onto the land. And we worked a calculation, said given the kind of absorption in urban employment there is, if you're destroyed as a farmer, how many years will it take? It was more than four centuries. So quite clearly, no one's going to be waiting four centuries for a job. But more importantly than that, is the fact that farms with more intensive inputs from people, from human beings, actually produce more. I want to show you some data that needs to be far more prevalent. These are graphs from the Food and Agriculture Organization. And they're on total output of food, not yield of a single commodity, which is very different. You can just grow a lot of rice or a lot of soya bean and nothing else. But total output is what matters, what the farm is growing. And it's, the index here is the size. The smaller the farm, the more it's producing. That's a known scientific fact. Small farms produce more. Look at any indicator. And why do they produce more? Because they bring something the agribusiness cannot. They bring love and care. The tender, loving care, the TLC factor. And there is no factor more important than TLC in the food system. You know, you see mama, our mama cooks so well because she brings tender, loving care into the food. And that care is what allows more production to happen. The more biodiverse intense your farm, the more biodiverse output it's producing. Now our research is showing we could feed two Indias if we farmed with biodiverse intensity rather than chemical intensity and removing farmers from the land. Two times India's population. This issue of scarcity, oh my God, nine billion people. Nine billion we can feed like that if we grow real food. <laughs>